In my previous video on liminal spaces, I briefly mentioned this image. It was only after the video was uploaded that the original creator contacted me on Twitter and showed me that the image I thought was a real photo of some dilapidated storage complex was actually a 3D model with some filters. It got me thinking about the quantity and power of fake liminal spaces. In my last video, I knowingly included some obviously fabricated liminal space images, but I never really dove deep into them. Even though the intro at the beginning included a 3D model of a liminal space by my own design. From video games to edits to paintings, let's explore some of the many fake liminal spaces out there. The first thing I want to get out of the way is a little addendum to my last video. I may have gotten carried away with the types of images I included. In some cases, I didn't really consider if some images included a transitional space or not, and just put them in there because I saw them on the subreddit and I thought they looked cool or nostalgic. Like, would you call this a transitional space? It might feel transitional in the grand tapestry of your life, but it's not physically designed to be transitional. What about this one? Maybe, maybe not, but I think this kind of confused people, and it seemed after the video some people got the impression that liminal spaces just mean nostalgic and creepy places when it's much more about transitional spaces. I could argue that some images I included feel transitional. For example, this house I showed. When I described my feelings about it, I specifically mentioned it reminded me of something on a road trip, and not as a destination. This transitional quality is also hinted at by the composition, where the house is not framed as the destination, but rather an object being passed by. In pictures of empty houses, as another example, usually the context is that you're passing through them to either buy or move away. And only until furniture is added does it become a place you regularly inhabit. But I should have made clear this distinction between emotional and physical liminal spaces. Defining liminal space precisely has proven difficult, because it's not supposed to be precise. In my video, I tried to give my own definition for the video saying it's a transitional space that is unsettling, and while it kind of works for those specific images, ultimately I think that definition is reductive and narrow. The Liminal Space subreddit has a quote saying a liminal space is the time between the what was and what's next. A place of transition, waiting, and not knowing. In their post-flare system, it describes classic liminal as places of transition where limited time is spent, hallways, airports, etc. This quality of transition also coincides with Google's and Wikipedia's definition of liminal and liminality. So liminal spaces can definitely include most of the spaces shown in the previous video and this one, but I need to make clear that they are not exclusively those types of creepy, nostalgic, or out of their design context transitional spaces. Although those do seem to be hallmarks that people associate with liminal spaces. Regardless, in all these definitions, there is an emphasis on transitional, and that should really be the greatest factor in determining what is and isn't a liminal space. There are many different categories of fake liminal spaces, including video games, digital collages, paintings, and plain 3D models. Fake liminal spaces have an advantage of greater potential over real life spaces. They can be customized, exaggerated, or distorted in ways that are impossible in real life, and so can have even more potential disorienting effects. In the digital collages I mentioned, people can take multiple familiar elements and combine them into a transitional image of even greater nostalgic power. Video games as a whole may have the most potential for liminal spaces out of any other medium. 3D worlds can be endlessly edited and remixed for any desired effect, and it's not too difficult to find areas or entire games without NPCs or other players to really give focus to that transitional space. Games like Minecraft have the potential for people to literally build liminal spaces and customize them in any way, and with the benefit of added nostalgia for many people in this generation, it's not too difficult to produce an emotional response. In some cases, like the one I mistook for a real location, virtual liminal spaces can be rendered very realistically and passed off as a real place. Because of the lack of people, sometimes it's hard to tell whether an image is supposedly of a real location. Minecraft with advanced shaders might be able to fool people the same way. Some have also pointed out how other sandbox games like Gary's Mod with its more realistic textures and uncanny modeling are ripe for eerie liminal spaces. 
One of my favorite posts from the game is this huge room with repetitive ornate textures and what looks like an enormous mirror, although it's hard to tell if it really is one as it seems to be reflecting the player, but this right wall doesn't seem to continue on. Regardless, the visual of an enormous vacant space with this illogical single step is produced. In the video game Naissance, the entire premise is exploring a world full of vast, hostile, transitional spaces and architecture that seems inhospitable for human travelers. The manga Blom has a very similar premise. The ten-volume work follows the stoic character Killy as he traverses these vast megastructures all the while searching for net terminal genes. Jacob Geller's video on gaming's harshest architecture goes into more detail on both, and I would highly recommend it. That's all I'll say about them for now. At some point in the future, I want to do a video that goes into far more detail, but if you enjoy the concept of liminal spaces, you'll probably enjoy these. Although that additional effect of vague familiarity is nowhere to be seen in these harsh fictional environments. Many people mentioned after the last video how the Stanley Parable is basically a liminal space video game, full of offices and hallways the player endlessly traverses. I've likely only scratched the surface of video game liminal spaces, but this video doesn't need to be an hour long, and unfortunately I'm not much of a gamer, so I'm just going to be moving on. Digital edits I touched on a bit in the last video already, however while these might evoke some dreams you might have had because of their obvious distortions, this photo was made to try and recreate a specific dream. My favorite part of this photo is the dark smudge in the middle, blocking the receding lines. As if their brain is purposefully adding black fog to block something they aren't supposed to see. When I asked for artists that produce images similar to those in the video, I got many different answers. Jeffrey Smart is a new favorite of mine. Their masterful combination of urban elements, uncanny elements, and unusual compositions really summarizes the essence of many strangely familiar liminal space images. Giorgio De Chirico, the Italian metaphysical painter, is someone whose works profoundly influence surrealism. He painted many sparse spaces full of Roman arcades, extreme distorted perspective, mannequins, and strong dramatic shadows from the late afternoon. Considering the amount of ancient architecture left in Europe, I think it's plausible this kind of architecture was nostalgic for the painter, in the same way leftover 80s architecture may be for younger modern Americans. Many elements in his paintings were in fact influenced by the things he saw and experienced in childhood. In 1909, he once wrote that metaphysical art combined everyday reality with mythology and evoked inexplicable moods of nostalgia, tense expectation, and estrangement. One such early painting is even titled The Anxious Journey, which is a great description of many liminal spaces. And how could I forget about Edward Hopper and his paintings of urban and rural uniquely American buildings, often populated with a single contemplative figure. Even with scenes that should feel comforting, the lack of people and overall sense of desolation conveyed in the barren skies and stretching landscapes are kind of haunting. Rick Amore also has made paintings in the same vein, but there is one in particular that speaks to me. This painting of escalators is also truly unsettling. The low light in this area makes the whole space feel underground and claustrophobic. The shopping windows don't display any recognizable products, but are instead filled with a sickly yellow light. The way the top of the escalator is hidden from view, and the last thing you see before it's cut off is this inexplicable dark stain in the upper left corner, fills me with dread for what's to come. What I found amusing after my last Liminal Space video is that I was even tagged in some Liminal Space inspired art. I quite like this drawing, with its illogical doorways and floor covered in strange overlapping tubes. As a subject matter, liminal spaces can provide many opportunities for art. Their usually uncanny qualities are ripe to be represented and remixed. There's this popular meme in the art community that many artists hate drawing backgrounds and much prefer to draw characters. But what if artists approach backgrounds differently? Not as chores that have to be completed to give your character some context, but as characters themselves. I think I have proven many times over that empty backgrounds and liminal spaces can have significant emotional impacts and can tell a story. In this way, settings are personified. They can be eerie or threatening, comforting or nostalgic. A setting doesn't have to be some grand cyberpunk city to be interesting or emotionally resonant. It can be as simple as a decaying hallway, as a room with regular architecture, as an imaginative, carefully constructed liminal space.